I've searched many years on end. There was none that my soul could depend. My soul cries out. For your presence in here, this very hour. For your presence in here, in His name I find, in His name I find, in His name I. My soul could depend. My soul cries out for your presence. Waiting for the kingdom come.
Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Rudy here. Welcome to our Next Gen Online Experience. We have pre-recorded this content. Wherever you are, we are so thankful that you can make it. We encourage you to grab your Bible, prepare your heart, and get ready to receive the Word from God. And I look forward to seeing you online in just a moment. Hey guys! What's up? Welcome back to our online service this week with me, Ding Ding, and... And Cheryl! Woo! Woo! <laughs> so Ding Ding, how has your quarantine been? Mm, my quarantine has been... Okay, but what about yours? Hmm... I think it'll just be easier to show you, hmm? You know what I mean? Mm, your quarantine was pretty productive, but I'm not sure if all of us can relate to that video. But thankfully, I've made a more relatable version. So, do you want to check it out? Yeah, let's go. Let's get on to the video. Oh my god, I feel so exposed with your video. Honestly, I was just like doing the video for the gram, you know. Things we do for the gram. Of course. So guys, before we move on to praise and worship session, we have prepared an encouragement verse. Cheryl, do you mind reading it for us today? Of course, so today's verse is from Proverbs 17 verse 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So guys, remember to stay positive in these hard times, and don't forget to be happy. Come on everybody together, let's just try to lift our hands up high today. Let's just surrender everything all to God and just worship Him today for He is a very beautiful Savior. Come on, sing out with your heart today. Come on, let's sing. Jesus, beautiful Savior, God of all majesty, risen King, sing. Lamb of God, Holy and righteous, bless and redeem by morning star. All the heavens shine your praise. Sing with your heart today, O creation. Above every name, exalted high, how wonderful, how beautiful, Jesus, your name, amen, and name above every name. Sing one more time with me from the front. Oh, 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 and you are beautiful, God. Yeah. Let's sing. Jesus, beautiful Savior, God of all majesty. All the heavens shout, all the heavens shout your praise. O creation, to worship you. How wonderful.
ting And ever Jesus I love you Sing it together today Jesus I love you I will sing forever Jesus I love Come on sing it out Jesus I love This time, I just want to put a smile on your face. I just want to put a smile on your face, God. For I love you forever. I love you forever. Let me sing. How wonderful. How beautiful. Above every day, exalted high, how wonderful, how beautiful, Jesus, your name, name above every day, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You guys ready to praise the Lord? Let's go. 
Thank you for this blessed day and for this past week. I'd like to thank you that we can all come here together over the internet and we can worship you together and we can um, praise you together and we can listen to your word together from wherever we are. Um, Lord, I'd like to pray over anyone who is sick, who is injured, who is feeling unwell. I pray for your healing and I pray for your comfort, Lord. Um, I pray for anyone who is feeling lost, who is feeling like they're in a dark place right now, Lord, that you can be their source of light and you can be their source of strength and that they can turn to you and run after you, Lord. Um, I'd also like to pray over the government that you will give them um, your guidance and your knowledge so that they can be able to make good decisions, make good choices that will um, benefit the country and the situation lord um lord thank you for everything you have done and everything you'll continue to do in the future lord in the name of god i pray amen happy sunday semuanya banyak orang bertanya-tanya apakah pandemi yang kita hadapi adalah tanda kedatangan tuhan yesus yang kedua kali Sebelum kita menjawab pertanyaan tersebut, kita harus mengerti bahwa kedatangan Tuhan Yesus dapat dibagi menjadi dua tahapan. Tahapan pertama adalah pengangkatan gereja atau yang sering kita sebut dengan rapture. 
Pada tahapan ini, Tuhan Yesus akan datang di awan-awan dan menjemput kita untuk bersama-sama dengan dia. Tahapan kedua adalah penampakan Kristus. Pada tahapan ini, Tuhan Yesus beserta orang-orang kudusnya akan mengalahkan Antikristus di dalam perang Harmagedon, lalu mendirikan kerajaan seribu tahun damai. Kita mempercayai bahwa pengangkatan gereja terjadi sebelum masa aniaya atau masa Antikristus. Sehingga pertanyaannya adalah, Apakah pandemi seperti COVID-19 saat ini dapat dikatakan sebagai tanda bahwa pengangkatan gereja atau rapture sudah dekat? Dalam Matius 24 ayat 4-12, Tuhan Yesus memberitahu murid-muridnya mengenai tanda-tanda yang akan terjadi menjelang kedatangannya yang kedua kali. Yaitu, yang pertama, goncangan-goncangan terhadap orang percaya. Yang kedua, goncangan-goncangan terhadap semua orang di bumi. Dan yang terakhir, pemberitaan Injil di seluruh dunia. Nah, yang perlu kita perhatikan adalah, pada Lukas 21 ayat yang ke-11, Tuhan Yesus memberikan tanda-tanda yang dapat dirasakan oleh semua orang. Dan akan terjadi gempa bumi yang dahsyat Di berbagai tempat akan ada penyakit sampar dan kelaparan, dan akan terjadi juga tanda-tanda yang mengejutkan, dan tanda-tanda yang dahsyat dari langit. Tanda-tanda yang Tuhan ungkapkan adalah kejadian yang harus terjadi. Karena itu adalah bagian dari rencananya. Dan tanda-tanda ini akan terjadi berulang-ulang di dalam sejarah manusia sebelum kedatangan Tuhan Yesus. Kita telah melihat banyak goncangan terjadi terhadap orang percaya. Banyak orang Kristen dianiaya karena percaya kepada Tuhan Yesus. Goncangan-goncangan juga terjadi kepada semua orang di bumi, seperti bencana alam, krisis ekonomi, bahkan merebaknya sakit penyakit. Efek dari goncangan-goncangan ini adalah meluasnya pemberitaan Injil, karena orang semakin mencari Tuhan di tengah penderitaan. Dan goncangan juga mendorong kita untuk segera melakukan apa yang Tuhan perintahkan, khususnya amanat agung. Dari pengertian ini, dapat kita simpulkan bahwa pandemi dapat dikatakan sebagai bagian dari tanda-tanda kedatangan Tuhan Yesus yang kedua kali. Saudara, yang perlu diingat adalah kita tidak dapat mengatakan bahwa setelah pandemi ini, Tuhan Yesus pasti akan langsung datang. Tetapi, kita juga tidak bisa berkata bahwa sesudah pandemi ini, Tuhan Yesus pasti tidak akan datang. Karena Tuhan Yesus jelas mengajar bahwa orang percaya tidak dapat menghitung atau menduga kapan waktu kedatangannya. Tidak ada yang tahu. Tetapi kita diminta untuk mempersiapkan diri menyambut kedatangannya. Mengenai kedatangan Tuhan Yesus yang kedua kali yang sudah amat dekat juga sudah disampaikan roh kudus sejak 2009 kepada Pastor Niko Nyotora Harjo. Roh Kudus menunjukkan dalam Yoel 2 ayat 28-32 bahwa akan terjadi pencurahan Roh Kudus juga goncangan-goncangan yang luar biasa. Akan tetapi melalui hal tersebut akan ada banyak orang berseru kepada Tuhan dan diselamatkan. Tahun 2013, Tuhan memberikan pernyataan melalui Pastor Nico bahwa yang dimaksud dengan pencurahan Roh Kudus adalah Pentakosta yang ketiga. Sejak saat itu, Pentakosta ketiga aktif disebarkan di mana-mana. Pastor Russell Evans dari Planet Shakers Church, Australia mendapat penglihatan bahwa roh kudus sedang dicurahkan di Indonesia. Ada kebangkitan jutaan anak-anak muda yang penuh roh kudus, yang cinta mati-matian akan Tuhan, dan akan melayani dengan cara yang belum pernah dilihat sebelumnya. Ini adalah jawaban doa bagaimana Pentakosta ketiga akan terjadi khususnya di Indonesia. Pentakosta ketiga juga diteguhkan oleh banyak hamba Tuhan baik dalam dan luar negeri di Empower 21 yaitu bahwa kegerakan ini akan lebih besar daripada pencurahan roh kudus di Azusa Street. Roh kudus memberi pengertian bahwa Pentakosta ketiga akan menuntaskan amanat agung dan setelah itu Tuhan Yesus akan datang kembali. Kita percaya bahwa ini pasti terjadi. Kita dapat mengambil kesimpulan bahwa pandemi yang sedang terjadi hari-hari ini adalah bagian dari tanda-tanda penggenapan Pentakosta ketiga di mana pencurahan roh kudus dan goncangan yang terjadi akan mengakibatkan banyak orang berseru kepada Tuhan dan diselamatkan. Artinya, amanat agung Tuhan sedang digenapi. So, setelah kita mengetahui hal tersebut, apakah yang harus kita lakukan untuk menyambut kedatangannya? Ada empat hal, yaitu yang pertama, hidup berjaga-jaga. Artinya, hidup kudus di hadapan Tuhan dan di hadapan manusia. Yang kedua, hidup siap sedia. Artinya, siap menyambut kedatangan Tuhan Yesus kapan saja. Yang ketiga, hidup setia melakukan perintah Tuhan, artinya melakukan amanat agung Tuhan Yesus dengan pentakosta yang ketiga. Dan yang terakhir, hidup intim dengan Tuhan, artinya banyak membaca, merenungkan, melakukan firman Tuhan, banyak memuji, menyembah Tuhan, 
dan banyak berdoa berbahasa roh. Saudara, walaupun pandemi COVID-19 mempunyai dampak negatif bagi dunia, tetapi jangan lupa, bagi kita yang percaya kepada Tuhan Yesus, pandemi ini adalah bagian dari tanda-tanda kedatangan Tuhan Yesus untuk menjemput kita, gerejanya. Mari persiapkan diri kita dan senantiasa menanti-nantikan kedatangannya. Haleluya, Tuhan Yesus memberkati. We would like to invite you to join our online retreat Campfire that will be held from 25th to 26th of September 2020 via Zoom. It is open to everyone who wants to join. The camp will be ministered by Pastor Rubin Adi Abraham, Pastor Yakub Ezra, Pastor Johan Handoyo, Pastor Betty Handoyo, and Pastor Daniel Prayogo. Registration opens today. Simply scan the QR code to register. Workers' prayer meeting will be held through Zoom meeting on Saturday 12th of September 2020 from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. The link for the Zoom meeting will be sent to all workers. Quarantine cannot stop you from worshiping and praising the Lord together. Let's join Cultivated Podcast event Worship Night at Home where we will worship together from the comfort of our home. The event will be streamed live from Cultivated Podcast Instagram on Saturday, 12th of September 2020 at 9 p.m. You can also submit your prayer request by sending us a direct message to Cultivated Podcast Instagram page. Ladies Fellowship Women of Impact Community will be holding a revival night with BCS Singapore on Friday, 11th of September 2020 at 7 p.m. AEST. Please visit BCS Singapore YouTube channel to watch the service. Our weekly bulletin is still running as usual, with more testimonies and articles from our congregation. Simply scan the QR code to read the latest bulletin. Do you have plenty of free time at home and don't know what to do? Are you looking for new skills to acquire during this quarantine season? The Vessel is introducing you to Quarantive. We are opening free classes for you to join. So simply scan the QR code to register. Those who need prayer support may submit your prayer request through the following link. www.bethanymalp.org.au slash form slash prayer request. Our pastoral team will contact you immediately. We are inviting you to join fasting prayer that is held every Saturday from 10 a.m. through Zoom meeting. For more information, please contact Demak. Prayer tower are held through Zoom meeting. You can find the schedule times as below. Offering and tithing can still be done through online transfer. If you want to make offering, please transfer it to this account on the screen. You can also make offering through Tithely by scanning the QR code on the screen. This is just a um, work mouse. This is what my dad uses at night when 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 he is like doing his computer at night, so I don't wake up. This is the one that my dad likes it so much. He mm-hmm. wear it walk when 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 all the family walking. This is a uh, Jade. Uh, Jaden Nunyat Jaden United I don't 
know, this is like a Zoom meet thing. So today I bring my dad's coffee cup because I couldn't think of something else. I think he works at like Big Super or something, I'm not sure. He works as like an engineer at like this car place. <laughs> I don't really know what he likes. He normally goes what our mom picks. Indomie. Indomie. Mm -hmm. I also like it too, but the spicy one. I need a guy to ask him. No, I need to ask him. <laughs> a few moments later role in a family obviously you know, yeah. yeah from McDonald's wow. mm, 18-17 years 12 years we've been together for 20 years I think I don't know Maybe he would if he had enough money. Three. God is not scary. Ten. Seven and a half. From zero to ten. Who else got? Zero. Zero, Amy? Mm-hmm. Did yeah. he did he ever discipline you? Yeah. Eyes also with Ariel. What? Well, how? How did he do it? That time when Ariel didn't clean up her room, her room was so messy. And then what did he do? Oh, like I think it's like then he asked me and Ariel to both clean up the room because she can't do it all herself, so I decided to help her. He just like, he gets angry at me. He's like, <laughs> Kenneth, do your work now, no more playing, or else you get grounded, or something like that. <laughs> yes? Yes? Yeah. Me yes. is yes and no. Sometimes yes and yes no. no, sometimes not that many. I see. Ah, I can see a lot of gestures now. Yeah, a lot of nodding and not not for Daryl. <laughs> my friends were playing with me on a game, and yeah. then my dad said, uh, "What's wrong?" And said, "My friends are playing with me." And then what did he so do? I have a game. Uh, he went to he went to the um, shops and bought me three games. Like when I'm like feeling down, like I usually ask my dad for help, and then like he always encourages me to keep on pushing, and he'll be always there for me. Like during this lockdown, he's like at home too, so it helps. But. Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! Lord, Heavenly Father, God, so I want to surrender this time into your hands, Lord God. And I just want to pray, Lord, as we sing this song, God, let it be a declaration from our hearts, Lord that you are doing something great during this time right now, Lord. Just want to thank you, Lord, and surrender this time into your hands, Lord. You're crushing in the pressing. You are making new wine. In the soul I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. 
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. What an honor and a privilege to be preaching the Word of God on such a significant Sunday. Today is a Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all that if you are joining our service now. And for everyone, please remember to treat your dad well today. If he is far from you, please call him. If you have a spiritual father, remember to honor him too. Now let's prepare our heart to receive the Word of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We're ready to hear your word. Speak to us, Lord. 
open our spiritual eyes and ears so we can understand your will in our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Use your servant to deliver your message. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we are entering the month of September, we're going to learn about spiritual growth. As in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plan and a time to uproot. There's a season when we were as a child and becoming youth and young adults and adults. So in every part, God is the one who put destiny to every person even we, before we were born. As in Psalm 139 verse 16, Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Since we are created in His image, we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We should maximize our potential. I remember once Pastor Johan Handoyo, our senior pastor, mentioned that the expensive land in the world is the cemetery. Why? Because in the cemetery store the bodies of people who should maximize their potential during their life. Today we're going to learn there are four phases of spiritual life. Number one, child phases, as in First Peter chapter two, uh, verse two up to three. In the same way that nursing infant cry for milk, you must intensely crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word, for this milk will cause you to grow into maturity, fully nourished and strong for life, especially now that you have had a taste of the goodness of the Lord Jehovah and have experienced His kindness. In this first stage of spiritual growth, the word of spiritual milk here is the word of God. The nourishment is in the milk of the word like an antibiotic guilt. This milk contains an elements that can eliminate our guilt. Therefore, the word is guiltless and unadulterated milk. God's word or logikos is the sustaining power of God's word coming from his very breath as it were to nourish and strengthen our inner being. Usually in this stage, we are ministered to know the Father's heart, to know our identity, and to throw all our bad past, deliverance, and then to be planted in a small community to grow up together. So where we learn about loving God, loving our neighbor and characters, spiritual discipline and other things. So after that, we go to the next stage. Youth phase, adolescence. In the Bible, Jesus grew more powerful in grace for he was being filled with wisdom and the favor of God upon him as in Luke chapter 2 verse 40. This stage is the stage of preparation for a youth to be a young adult. In this stage, usually, we learn how to submit to people above us. Learn how to invest in spiritual life. As in the Bible, for your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasures. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. The phase of investing times, efforts, thoughts, wisdom, intelligence, and money in this season. As well, the joy of youthfulness. You know, youth always full of joy. And start to think and to pursue a big dream. And friends are really matter in this stage. Your friend will shape your character in this season as written in Proverbs that bad company corrupts character. In other words, good company improves your character. The right community really matters and very important in this season. Then you go to the next phase, actually ascending stage, successful or golden period. 
This is the phase when we are becoming a parent or elder or senior, where you already prepare your life and with opportunities would be added the result of the success. The key is preparation plus opportunity equal with success. This stage you would face many challenges, such as temptations, Says that in the Bible, when Jesus started his ministry, he was tempted by Satan. In three things, power, money, popularity. As well in this stage, people tend to use his own wisdom. Like in John 18, you know, the story about Peter and Jesus. When Jesus began to reveal to his disciple that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer injustice. Peter took him aside to correct him privately. He reprimanded Jesus over and over, saying to him, God forbid, Master, spare yourself. You must never let this happen to you. But what happened? Jesus rebuked Peter. Peter, Peter didn't understand God's vision. So he was seeing things from his own paradigm. The next stage, regeneration or reproduction phase. Mentoring, empowerment, delegation, multiplication. As in Matthew chapter 20, 27. In this stage, this is the phase uh, of full maturity and reproduction. This stage when the principle of the servant, as in Matthew chapter 20, the greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one with the heart of a servant. The person would do prayer, mentoring, heart for the souls, compassion, evangelism, discipleship. Now, the question is, in what stage you are in? Child, adolescence, ascending, or regeneration? Do you grow spiritually or stagnant? Well, for knowing whether you are growing up spiritually, there are four elements to be considered. To be considered. First one is the way of thinking will be changed from flesh to spirit. It's like a baby. He or she will respond if he or she is not feeling comfortable. How do we know the baby is not feeling well? Crying. The more older the baby is, and especially in the primary age, uh, you know, the primary school age, they develop their cognitive thinking. The same with a child state spiritual, they have a limited point of view based on their natural things, not from the spirit. It's happened to uh, people spiritually. If we read in the first Corinthians chapter three, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. When the infants in Christ, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. Not an infant in Christ. Wow. In other, in other words, people who are not living in the spirit is not growing up spiritually. They are a natural man or worldly man. Furthermore, in First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the natural man does not receive the thing from the spirit of God. To him they are nonsense. Moreover, he is unable to grasp them because they are evaluated through the Spirit. In Romans, it's very clear. The more much of the person in spirituality, they will be transformed by the renewing of their minds. Yes, their minds. If you read in the, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Keep letting yourself be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will know that God wants and will agree that what he wants is good, satisfying and able to succeed. Then the next question is, how can we change the way of our thinking? Well, 
we need to let the Holy Spirit transform our life. Then we will know God's what God wants and will. Again, God's wants and His will, not what we want or our will. If we still force God with what we want, that's a sign your mind hasn't been renewed yet. We have to know that God wants and will always good. That's why we always say God is good all the time. Because why? His will in our life always good. Satisfying, even able to succeed. People are always thinking of how to succeed here yeah? without looking at what God wants. In this verse, you have to agree with what He wants to do in your life and His will. That's a choice in your life. Well, one thing we have to do is to welcome Holy Spirit to work in us and abide in us as in John 15 verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. In other words, stay united with me. Stay united with me as I will with you. For as the branch cannot put forth fruit by itself apart from the vine, so you cannot bear fruit apart from me. Abide, united, means you let God, God make a home in you. Sometimes we, we always like, uh, uh, you know, bargain with God. God, I like this person. I fall in love with this person. And but God said, he or she is not the right person for you. But you keep on forcing God for doing that one. Or sometimes you want certain job. And then that's not for you. Even there's a, uh, that's your dream. You want to work in the nice place like that. But God wants you to do something else. Again, because His will in your life is greater than what you see. His will in your life is greater than what you see or think. If He abides in you, obey Him and follow what He wants you to do in your life. Next. The second element for knowing your spiritual growth is the changing process from self-concern to concern for others. From selfish to selflessness. It means the affection, of, uh, the affection will be changed. If you read in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. More further, in verse 21, For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Clearly, in 1 Corinthians says, Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. If you remember or you see uh, little kids, if they got something they like, hardly they want to share with others. You know, they keep it, you know, like you know, candy or anything, toys or something they like. The same with our spiritual journey. If we do not concern others, how does the love of God abide in you? In 1 John chapter 3, whoever has this world's goods and sees his brothers in need and shut up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Remember, abide in him. Selflessness. Selflessness. From legalism to compassion is the next one. Your heart will be changed. The more mature, mature we are in Christ, the love of Christ will change our heart. As we know that we are saved by His grace, not by work of the law. We understand how deep God's love for us. We're going to have His heart for others. As in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. After compassion is justice, of course. As we understand that justice and compassion is hand in hand, our God is just, but our God is full of mercy and compassion. Too. So we got three elements spiritual growth, from flesh to spirit. The way of thinking will be transformed. From selfish to selflessness, the affection will be changed. From legalism to compassion, 
the heart will be changed. And the next one, from self-reliance to surrender, your inner or faith will be changed. When my kids were still young or early childhood, sometimes they won't break, they want to break the boundaries, not in purpose, but you know, kids, yeah. Sometimes I ask them, hey, don't go out because raining or something, you know, but they still keep on nagging or sometimes even when I didn't see them, they try to go out without knowing why they should, shouldn't go out. In spiritual growth, the person who's still baby or kids, they want to be independent without knowing the dangers or consequences outside the boundary. The more mature the person's uh, spirituality, they will trust God, surrender to Him by obeying Him. In Philippians, uh, Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 12 to 13, yeah, you can read it. From these four elements of spiritual growth, we can learn that the process of spiritual growth is started by knowing Him. Then the older you are, you are going to move into a deeper relationship with Him. This is the process of submission and to be disciple. And then, next stage, the more we understand and knowing Him through words and relationship, we become His steward who's doing what He asks us to do. So we're becoming a doer. So the goal, from knowing, becoming a doer. From child to steward. And then, to reproduce. Reproducing multiplication through discipleship. There's a long process from child to maturity or uh, regeneration or reproduction. There's a long process from the child to be a grown up dad or mom. To grow spiritually takes time. During this stage four lockdown in Melbourne, I have a new hobby. What's that? What is my hobby? Gardening. <sighs> Our garden bed had been planted with herbs long before. So far, I never had done it before because my gardener who did it for me. Honestly, I'm not into it. I like to see green, but not as a doer. I don't want like to uh, maintain, you know, my garden. But I like to see green. I don't want to do any work with gardening. But at this time, when I saw uh, that growing vegetables was not as difficult as I thought before, I tried to plant Asian green vegetables. This is out of necessity, where I need to eat a lot of vegetables. Then, I have a new habit every morning before starting uh, work, which is to check the condition of the plant and also water plant, water, water it them, you know, water them. Even during lunch break, I look again at the state of the plants. So my wife sometimes makes a joke with me, hey, you have another child, you know, you have another kid in your life. Well, I want to see the result quickly or immediately. Unfortunately, nothing is instant. If I want to get instant veggie, just go to the supermarket. The lesson is the growth takes time. Starting from the planting process, the depth level soil, the fact that not all of them grow as expected because some are exposed to caterpillars so that the newly grown leaves are eaten by them. While there are several different places, can grow well. Another thing is the factor of the sun. In area exposed to the sun, the growth is faster, while those that are protective from the sun, it grows very slowly. Also, fertilizing in addition to the depth of the soil is very important. The same in our spiritual life. As growing our spiritual life, as in Second Peter uh, chapter 1, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The more mature our spiritual life, the more productive and useful. This is the long process until we can produce something and useful, where people can taste the fruit which come out of our life. It means the inside out. Where we can, uh, where we make an impact uh, to the community or people around us. Next, we're going to learn what is the key of spiritual growth. If you read in Second Peter, 
of uh, chapter 1 verse 3 God's power has given us everything we need for the life and godliness so the Greek word for power is dynamis the same word to describe the power of the Holy Spirit in other words, Holy Spirit is in us. If the Holy Spirit is in the Holy Spirit is in us, He has given us everything we need in life and godliness. You need to abide in Him again. Point number one: abide in Him. The power of the Holy Spirit enables us to grow. We can do anything because He is the one in us who enables us to do anything, not with our own strength. The second thing. Be a doer, as in Second Peter. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with generous profession of moral excellence or goodness, and moral excellence with knowledge, it means understanding, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection. Or mercy and brotherly affection or mercy with love for everyone love agape unconditional love God's love so everything is interrelated and at the end is worked by agape by God's love in other words supplement your faith with agape Agape looks like the roots that are under the ground, which are not visible. How deep we are planted in a good land and filled with the truth of God's word, in addition to a supportive environment. When our spiritual, spiritual life is not growing properly, let's examine what kind of root in our life. Whether bitterness, roots, unforgive, or lack of nutrition, Lazy to read the word of God? Come on, let's check it. Or no time to fill in our spiritual life. No nutrition at all. Do you really agapau God? Do you really love God with your heart and your mind and your soul? And your do you love your neighbor too? Are you a doer? We have to make every effort as said in the Bible. Do these exercises. Doing good with understanding, self-control, Patience, endurance, godliness, mercy, and loving. Then you are going to see that you are producing something at the end. A healthy tree will grow and produce something. So our life too. When we grow, we will produce something. As in first day. since these virtues are already planted deep within and you possess them in abundant supply they will keep you from being inactive or fruitless in your pursuit of knowing jesus christ more intimately in 1 peter 2 verse 8 let's go back to this uh this uh uh to the tree here yeah? uh do you know the small tree never grow up we know a lot of big tree, but there is a tree that never grows up, never grows uh, tall and big. The name is bonsai tree. Bonsai plants are deliberately made for decoration and not expected to produce fruit. It's small because the roots are kept on trimming. Yeah, uh, somebody must maintain it. Yeah, it doesn't grow properly. It looks good, good, but does not develop and does not bear fruit at all. Isn't, isn't it that the same as the non-growing Christian life? Looks like a believer, Christian, but not maxima, maximum, because the root keep being cut, and what is worth is not bearing fruit. No love at all. Do not become spiritual bonsai. Look spiritual, but do not produce and do not grow. If we are planted in the house of the Lord, we will flourish in Psalm 92, verse 6, uh, 13. And we must be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. That's the evidence that we are growing up. Well, as a conclusion, remember that the process of spiritual growth is started by knowing Him. Then move into a deeper relationship with Him. 
This is the process of submission to be disciple. And the more we understand and know him through words and relationship, we become his steward who's doing what he asks us to do. So we're becoming a doer, the doer. And next, reproducing, multiplication through discipleship. And the transformation will be significant. From flesh to spirit, the way of thinking will be transformed. From selfish to selflessness, the affection will be changed. From legalism to compassion, the heart will be changed. And the next one, from self-reliance to surrender, your inner of your faith will be changed because you rely on Him all the time. Totally surrender. And finally, the key of spiritual growth. We abide in Him. We are rooted in love, agape love, to be doer. Well, if you feel that you are spiritual bonsai in your spiritual life, now I would like to invite you to ask God to work in your life again, to clean any doubt about Him. You need to totally surrender your life to Him. Obey His voice because He always gives you a good plan for your life. Do what He wants you to do. Do His will. Let's say to God and let's pray. And you may repeat after me. Dear God, this is me. I'm ready to recommit again my life to you. And learn to surrender my life to you. With an open heart, I welcome you again to take over my life. I give my life to you. Shape me. Transform me. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Stay in me. Abide in me. Make home in me. Guide me and lead me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, have a blessed Sunday, guys. Now, this is a time for us to receive the blessing from our Father in heaven. Let's open our hand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. See you again next week. God bless you. So that was it for today's service. Just an FYI, Cool is still running as per normal. And for more information, contact your Cool leaders. And if you are new and you're interested in joining Cool, please send us an email to pastoralcare at bethanymail.org.au with your name, contact detail, and description. And feel free to have a chat with us as well and stay tuned for more updates by visiting our Instagram at BIC Next Gen. We have the link on the description box below. We will see you guys again next week at 11 a.m. Bye!